And uh, not a, a blue steel inside, I can tell you, at the town hall here <laughs> in the beautiful city of Hobart. But it is, it is the chance for undecided voters to have their say. We know that this is a, the, the template for leaders' debates, which really, I, I think, and I, I'm sure you agree, extracts the, the honest exchanges with the leaders because there's nowhere to run. They can fudge with us, journalists, but with voters face-to-face, it's a very different story. Tom, with me here at the uh, town hall, I've got... Liberal Senator Erica Betts and Labor frontbencher Julie Collins. It's great to see you both. Thanks for having us in the beautiful uh, state of Tasmania. Welcome in Tassie any time, Karen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator. And uh, this early election, I'm I'm really interested on this. Is this all about Peter Gutwin trying to capitalise on the incumbent effect? Because we've seen it with Premier Palaszczuk. We saw it with uh, Mark McGowan, Michael Gunner in the Northern Territory. He's going one year early. Is it all about trying to capitalise on the incumbency? This is not quite one year early, so we're in the last year as it is. He was denied the majority that uh, the Liberals had sought at the last election, courtesy of one person indicating that she would go as an independent. So in this period of uncertainty, we do need stable majority government. When Peter Gutwin lost that, he went to the Governor seeking a new mandate so that he could be clothed with the authority to take the necessary action to rebuild our economy and our community post-COVID. You must recognise it's it's tough for oppositions. It's a year early, this election, Kieran. I mean, let's be honest. Uh, The government, the Premier, did have confidence. He had Sue Hickey write a letter saying that she would provide confidence to the government. Uh, Madeleine Ogilvie has joined the Liberal Party. So, in theory, the government actually had 14 seats and the majority is 13. So, they didn't need to go a year early. And what I'm hearing from people is they're really concerned about going to an election a year early without their vaccines. It's tough for the opposition, though, isn't it? Because you've got... It seems to me there's a vulnerability for the government on the health story around the hospital waiting lists and so on. Rebecca White says one in eight Tasmanians are on health waiting lists of some sort. Yet the flip side of that is you've got this wonderful story of Tasmania being the safest place on earth. That's a tough one to beat. Well, I think every state did well during the global pandemic, and I think it was actually the state premier standing up to the prime minister, of course, who wanted free flow across the country. Let's be frank about it. The state premier stood up to the prime minister on it. But what we've seen here in Tasmania in the last seven years is the health system is in crisis. We've seen the waiting list blow out, as you alluded to. One in eight Tasmanians on some form of waiting list for health, uh, whether it be a specialist or elective surgery. We've got an issue with housing affordability, whether it be the prices of houses, rent, the social housing waiting list has blown out extraordinarily. Like, mm. things are not going nearly as well as people think they are. So why... Look, why look, the simple fact is, Kieran, state Labor wanted the borders opened earlier. That's not true. It is true. But on the health system, you, oh, we'll the get to that... Just, with the health system, it's struggling, isn't it? Very clear, uh, under the Labor Green government, they got rid of 285 nurses... It's more than seven years ago now. Year, ..in their last year, and we've been rebuilding. And so there are literally hundreds of millions of more dollars in our health system, but we had you the cut 1. huge 6 billion embarrassment. Hours. We had the huge. No, we haven't. You we had have. the huge embarrassment of the Labor leader with her health spokesman going to the Royal Hobart Hospital, saying they've closed this ward, and this is an indication of a health care in, a health system in crisis. Only to find out, because they hadn't done their homework, that this was being refurbished, and that ward had been moved into a new section. Of the Royal but you can see there's a lot of room for improvement in the Tasmanian system. Is it, why is that? Is it because you can't get enough doctors in, nurses? Oh, look, why is that? Look, there is a limit on the number of doctors and nurses one can get, and we are trying to get them. But, look, there are more doctors and more nurses now in the health system than there were under the Green Labor government. And, what's more, we are continuing to build and increase and spend more on the health system but we have to have renewal in the Royal Hobart Hospital. And what we're doing is dealing with 16 years of neglect of Labor and Labor Green governments, and that takes a while to rebuild. Julie Collins, when you look at the the skills question, it seems to be one that crosses a number of different sectors. You spoke on health, but construction, the housing crisis, people are finding it uh, obviously hard to to get a house, let alone an affordable house. Well, what we're seeing, and there of course, aren't the skills to build th- new there ones. There are not the skills to build new ones. And what we're seeing, of course, is apprenticeships go down under the government. What we're seeing, of course, is the wrecking of TAFE. Uh, they're talking now about essentially privatising TAFE. Oh, that is absolutely uh, Tasmanians wrong. want some choices, and they want skills to get work in this state. Uh, the last lot of unemployment showed unemployment going in the wrong direction. 
Tasmanians are concerned. They want to be able to live in Tasmania, get access to healthcare, get affordable housing and be able to get a job. That's all they really want, Kieran. And this government is not delivering. We've had seven years of neglect from this government and you can't make up for it with election promises when you're going a year it's, early. Is, Why it, not just stay in yeah. government and deliver Kieran, the promises that Kieran, you're making? We have got the best economic uh, indicators of any of the state and territories. But there are pressures, aren't there? Comsec there are. indicators. Tasmania tops four of the eight and with the other four, we are in the top half. We used to be the recession state under state Labor and Greens. We then elected a Liberal government. We became the state of change. We are now the standout state. Economically, we are doing exceptionally state well. State Labor paid off the debt. Housing. You're blowing and, the debt out. Relate, and in relation to housing, let's be very clear, it's supply and demand, and we have had too many Green councils not freeing up land to make it available for more housing. And that is why the state government has quite rightly pursued a one uh, state, one uh, plan, one state plan yeah. for development one, for the whole state. That's interesting, but I guess that gives continuity then across the various yes. places. But it's such a beautiful state as well. You can see why people are cautious in terms of opening up new corridors of development and so on. But that beauty also attracts uh, tourists. And I know it was very popular with Chinese tourists up until recently. How important is it that Tasmania and the other states as well, I think Gladys Berejiklian started this debate, say to their, their constituents, we need to have a debate about how many cases of COVID we'll accept once the population is vaccinated to reopen. What are your thoughts well, on when that? When will we get vaccinated is the question. Well, well, look, this is a huge task to roll out vaccination. Tasmania, yet again, is the standout state in relation to the rollout of the vaccination in comparison to other states and territories. And look, it's a proper debate that needs to be had, but based on the medical advice as to when we are ready and safe and secure to be able to reintroduce international tourists into the mix. And uh, we have to take that step at a time to ensure that we keep our population safe, especially in Tasmania, where unfortunately our health demographics aren't flash and we've got the most elderly population of any of the states and territories so we have a vulnerability here and that is why it was so irresponsible of state labour to seek to open the borders earlier. We didn't seek to open the borders earlier. What we did, did was we asked for a date which the other states and territories had been talking about dates to do this. We never said they had to be open. We said we need to set a time frame and a date for that to occur. You are that is the truth of it. No, I'm not, not Eric. But the bottom line is when it comes to vaccinations, your government promised four million of us would have it by the end of March. Now, we haven't even yet hit four million people with vaccinations. I get in Tasmania now, why are we having an election a year early when we haven't yet had our vaccination? The reason that the pre-polls will be up this time is because people are frightened of turning up and queuing on election day because they haven't yet had their vaccine. But in, in that question about the border, the international border, that is, yep. this state, as I said to Senator right. Abetz, it's very popular with international tourists. Certainly when is. will they get to return? Well, that's a question based on when we actually get the vaccine. We don't have any deadline or target for how long this is going to take. But do we have to think about changing the discourse around this Well, I think once we know well. when we're going to be all vaccinated then we should have that discussion. But the bottom line is, is none of us know when we're going to get a vaccine. I have no idea when I'm going to be vaccinated. I don't know if you know when you're going to be, Kieran. But most Tasmanians and most Australians still have no idea when they're getting their vaccination. Julie Collins, Senator Betts, thank you for thank your you. time.